Hello everyone, bringing you a video today covering the bonus mannequin for June 2021. The reason we have a bonus mannequin video this month is because the poll over on Patreon, which the, the corporal tier can vote on the topic which is going to be covered in Mannequin of the Month each month, returned two winners, uh, two top picks, and the first of which has already been covered as the Mannequin of the Month for this month. And this was the, the other uh, winner, uh, which is British Forces, a British infantryman in Malaya, in the mid 1950s. Now uh, there was a toss-up really about wh which would be covered as the mannequin of the month and which would be uh, covered later on in the month. It doesn't really make any odds so Malaya we're covering here as the bonus mannequin. We'll start at the top as we normally do, look at the various bits and pieces of the uniform and equipment, move this around and have a look at all the details. The topic I'm very interested in, uh, the Malaya emergency is, is fascinating and it's one of the earlier examples of the British Army uh, individuals being able to personalise kit and equipment and that's uh, definitely shown on the mannequin here today. Uh, a lot of it is a, it's a mix of equipment as we'll see as we, we look at this and there are certain elements of this which have been personalised. One of which is at the top of the mannequin here the jungle hat. This has been set up uh, by the individual quite distinctively. It has a stoved in crown or sort of to give us a pork pie hat effect at the top there and the brim has been stitched up on each side. And this became increasingly common during the emergency and would remain fairly common in Borneo, uh, the Indonesia-Borneo confrontation as well, the personalisation of the, the jungle hats. So that's to give a little bit of individuality to it, but otherwise it is a standard issue British jungle hat of a period. The rest of the uniform consists of the 1950 pattern green uniform. This was of course also made, made in khaki for use in arid environments in deserts and so forth. It's essentially the standard British Army hot weather uniform of the 1950s and into the 1960s as well. It consists of a bush jacket and the crossover belt trousers. The bush jacket is made of a cellular material, the trousers are made of drill, cotton drill. And this bush jacket has actually been worn as a shirt, it's been worn tucked in which was relatively common at the time. For that purpose the attached waist belt has been removed from this particular example. It's quite a faded, well used example this would have been very much the standard by the mid-1950s. There were still other patterns floating around, but this was the most common by that time period. The web equipment is a mixed bag and it is quite customised. Starting at the front here, we'll talk about the ammunition carriage. This is a bandolier holding 50 rounds of 303 in five round charges, which would show that this man is carrying the number five rifle, which is the jungle carbine in very much colloquial terms, it's not an official title for it at all, but it's partly because of its use in the Malayan jungles post-war that it became known as the Jungle Carbine. The men would be carrying number fours in other theatres, deployed to Malaya would find themselves armed with a number five, so that's probably one of the reasons that the rifle got its name. It was not originally intended for jungle use exclusively of course, but it was heavily used in Malaya during the uh, early to mid-1950s. Just underneath the bandolier, you can see here we have the web belt from the 1944 pattern web equipment. Now this had been specifically designed, or well, this version of it in green with the dulled fittings, had it been specifically designed for the continuing war in the Far East, it had been designed as a tropical issue web equipment. And it was used in that role post-war. It was something of a theatre issue for the Far East. It was used in Korea, it was used in Malaya and then on into Borneo, and it remained a sort of tropical issue web equipment. With some exceptions, some units were issued it as well, a uh, sort of unit issue, but it's very synonymous with the post-war jungle fighting. So we have the waist belt there. That is supporting on this hip here, an ammunition pouch, as you can see. We have a machete on this side, but we'll look at those in more detail as we move this round. Also from the 1944 pattern web equipment, we have L straps on the shoulders here, as you can see. You see the adjustment buckle there. You can just see the hook that would normally be used to hook into the top of the ammunition pouches if they were being carried at the front of the belt. Otherwise the pack is unsupported, it's just hanging on the shoulders on the L straps and we'll see that as we move this round as well. Looking at the left hand side of the mannequin here, we can see the pocket down on the leg of the 9050 pattern trousers. See the sleeves here are rolled up on the bush jacket, very common at this time period. And then you have the ammunition pouch. Now this is actually a first issue 1944 pattern ammunition pouch. It shouldn't really be able to hang low on the belt like this. The later ones introduced in the 1960s have a higher set of C hooks on the back, so they are designed to be able to be worn high or low on the belt. This is a first issue, which doesn't have that extra set of C hooks, but it has had slits cut in the back to allow it to just sit low on the belt as we have it here. And this would be used to carry extra ammunition, 
hand grenades, that sort of thing. In general British practice at this time period, hand grenades were supposed to be carried inside pouches rather than clipped onto belts and so forth. Uh, you do see a little bit of that, but primarily grenades would be carried in a pouch and carrying this here, as well as the ammunition carried in the bandolier, you've got plenty of capacity there for the extra ammunition and possibly grenades as well. Looking at the back here, we can see the side profile of the 1908, now repatterned as 1937 pattern, pack. So this is being carried in lieu of the 1944 pattern haversack, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. You can also see the, the bottle carried, the water bottle carried low on the belt around the back there as well. To talk about a bit more about those, we'll move this around now and have a look at the back. So the 1908 pack, as I say, repatterned post-war as 1937 pattern, part of 1937 pattern, 1908, of course, being obsolete, completely obsolete by this time. The pack had been retained for use with 1937 pattern. It was then also used with 1944 pattern for changing stations. It's not uncommon to see troops embarking for Korea, either carrying the pack separately with the great coat and so forth in it, or alternatively, actually with it attached to the 1944 pattern equipment. Now, this has been attached to 1944 pattern L straps. It's not using 1937 pattern L straps in this instance. A very good reason for that is the 1944 pattern L straps can be adjusted whilst you're wearing them. They have a buckle which allows you to tighten them in, which means that it's a little more practical to carry this without the support of the rest of the web equipment. It's a bit more like a separate rucksack where you can tighten the shoulder straps in and carry it as comfortably as possible on the back. The reason for replacing the haversack with this is that although the 1944 pattern haversack is enlarged when compared to 1937 pattern, has the pouches on the outside, which will take a mess tin half each, for example, and it does have external stowage, the carrying capacity of the pack is still greater. And as the Shindits had found during the Second World War, carrying capacity of long range jungle operations or, or even relatively short range jungle operations where you need to be carrying all your kit with you, it's hard to be resupplied. You need a good amount of carrying capacity and the pack certainly offers that. So it's not uncommon in period photographs to see the pack being carried on the back. And as I say, in some instances using the 1944 pattern L straps to give that bit more adjustment in being able to carry it. Underneath the flap here, we have an interesting feature of, the, of jungle warfare at this time period and into the 1960s. A pair of, these are actually batter made, but batter boots. These are uh, short of converse style, uh, converse high top style um, sneakers in American terminology, pumps in British terminology, whatever you want to call them. Locally procured, they were worn at night. Uh, the jungle boots would be turned upside down or could be turned upside down to allow the water to drain out. They aren't going to dry in jungle conditions, but they can be allowed to ventilate a little bit. And these given the opportunity to uh, wear some, something else uh, and let the boots uh, rest and drain out for a bit, drain as much of the water out of them as possible. Because as covered in previous videos, the British jungle boot at the time retains water. It's not a good design. So boots wear at night. Inside here, you'd have spare dry-ish clothing for wear at night. You'd have sleeping gear, very rudimentary, perhaps even just the poncho in some instances, and then rations, depending on the length of patrol. But you could generally, it's not uncommon to see men on four, four day patrol or longer patrols, but carrying four days worth of rations, they'd then be resupplied. You could fit four 24 hour ration packs into one of these with a little bit of, um, with some of it already consumed on the first day and a little bit of uh, jigsaw work to slot everything in. Underneath that, of course, we can see suspended from the back of the belt here, we have a single 1944 pattern water bottle. Very common in Malayan emergency, even on relatively longer patrols, to see men just carrying one water bottle. Reliance was placed on jungle streams and use of the Millbank bag to filter the water and the use of sterilisation tablets to sterilise it. So relatively limited water carrying here, as you can see. But single water bottle there on the back, it does also contain the cup which nests together very similar to US practice, and it hangs from the bottom of the belt there with M1910 hanger hooks, well out of the way of the pack carried on the back. So there we are, I hope you found it interesting looking at this. I certainly, as I said earlier in the video, I find the Malayan emergency very interesting. It's a time when kit customization, being able to wear kit in a more individual manner, was becoming more common in the British Army, certainly out in theatre, it was obviously very regimented still in the British Army, the Rhine and other theatres, a lot more prescriptive in what you would wear and how you would wear the equipment and so forth. But in Malaya, in the jungle fighting, even at this relatively early stage, it was becoming more common for men to customise their web equipment. And it varied depending on what weapons and so forth were carried as well. 
So it's interesting from that point of view, you see quite a lot of variation between men in photographs as to what they're carrying. And it's one of the first times you really see that on a, a large scale. Hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. If you have, and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can, both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And of course the corporal tier over on Patreon gives you the opportunity to vote each month on what's going to be covered in Mannequin of the Month. And if two topics come up uh, with equal marks, we end up with the bonus mannequin as well. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And as with the Mannequin of the Month, there'll be photographs of this posted up over there as well. If you'd like to get in touch with me, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.